Hello, this is Reza Rad from Redacad. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to change the data source type from one source to another source, such as, for example, from Excel data source to a SQL Server database data source, or from Snowflake data source to Oracle data source, as long as they have the same structure, how you can have a parameter like this, that you can change that parameter and get the data from the new data source using Power Query parameters. Let's see how it works. Uh, to understand how this solution is going to work, I'm going to first show you the completed result. Here I have a Power BI report connected to a table called Fact Internet Sales Table. This table comes from an Excel data source which exists somewhere in my local hard drive and this is the count of rows from that table or the sum of the sales amount column from that table. Now I want uh, to be able to switch this data source. I have exactly similar data source under SQL Server as you can see here under my SQL Server instance I have a different database uh, and that database has a fact internet sales in there, it is different size of row, different number of rows, but it is exactly the same structure, same columns, same data types. So I want to switch to that. If you want to switch to something like that, um, your way of doing this uh, usually would be going to Power Query Editor, getting data from your SQL Server data source. Um, means uh, you have a new table. When you have a new table, if you have some relationships in your model, you have to reconnect them all again. If you have some visualizations connected to this table, you have to do them all again because this is totally new table. You have to publish your solution again. Uh, so it would be a lot of manual work and a lot of time consuming uh, work to to do if you want to switch from one data source to another data source and this happens quite often for example one of the situations is that when one data source is deprecated you want to switch to a new data source or you have been using SQL Server on premises now you are switching to Snowflake for example as a data source so I'm going to show you how to do this in Power BI without needing to change anything in the code without needing to change your reports, your visualizations, your modeling relationships, or not even needing to publish your solution again. Uh, the idea is to use Power Query parameters. I have explained about those uh, previously in other videos. Go and check the link down in the description below, which points you to those uh, articles and videos. Uh, for this example, let's go through that example step by step. Let's say I have a data source from Excel. My Excel data source is coming from, um, from an Excel file, which is AdventureWorks uh, Excel file. I'm choosing that. From that data source, I'm choosing one table. This solution can be also uh, applied for multiple tables as well. Uh, but for simplicity, I just show it for one table. I have Fact Internet Sales table here. I select it. I can load and do the visualization, but for now, I'll just go to the transform data to show you that table in the in the Power Query editor. Transform data will bring you to the Power Query editor. I'll see my table with all the columns, structures, and things like that. If I close and apply, I'll get exactly the same, uh, the same data in my Power BI file. Now, um, let's say I have built my report and I want to switch it to SQL Server using that parameter. So first thing I want to do is actually uh, get that part of the code that get data from SQL Server. So uh, one approach is to get data and then choose that new source. In my case, it is SQL Server. For you, it might be any other sources. <clears throat> then I set the connection information. My server address is this, my local server address. I put this database name uh, as well in there. Here is my database name. Um, I'll see the list of tables in that database. I have exactly the same table called Fact Internet Sales Table. Uh, instead of load, I click on Transform Data because load will create a new table for me inside Power BI Desktop. I don't want to do that. I want to use it to load data into the same table. So I'll go to Transform Data. This will open Power Query Editor again. Uh, but this time I have, uh, I have two Fact Internet Sales Table. One 
is coming from the Excel, the first one. The second one is coming from SQL Server. They have exactly the same structure. It is important that you check this before doing any further steps. They have exactly the same column names and the same data types. Now I'm going to uh, get the code from this new script, which is from SQL Server. I can do that by going to the View tab, uh, Advanced Editor. Before doing that, make sure you have selected your new uh, query. When I go to Advanced Editor, I'll see the M script that this query is built based on it, and you can see it is coming from SQL Server. Now, if you are interested to learn more about how M script works and things like that, again, there's a link down in the description below to Basics of M video. I recommend go and check it out. For this one, I'm going to select this part basically anything that is in the let section, not in the section, not in in section. Uh, anything here, I'll select that and then copy it. I cancel this one. Then I go to my previous query, the one that came from Excel, and I go to advanced editor for that. Now this is coming from Excel. The, uh, the number of steps you have in here might be more, might be less. It doesn't really matter. Um, what we are going to do is to add that part into here. Now, uh, the last line before in, as you can see here, the last line before in is actually this line, uh, because after that in starts. I'm going to add here a comma, because uh, defining a variable in M uh, is separated by using a comma. So I'll add a comma, and then I'll paste the code that I copied from there. Um, so what I've done is I've added this comma here and I added this part of the code, Sorry, this part of the code uh, in here. This code will not be still executable because as you see, we have an error. This error is likely to happen. You might see it or you might not see it. But if you see it, it is very likely uh, because of two things. One thing is that you may have missed the comma here. Another thing is that you may have variables with exactly the same name. Here you see I have a source variable and I also have a source variable at the top. That is, of course, when we got data from Excel workbook. This is when we get data from SQL database. In Power Query, you cannot have two different variables with the same name. What I'm going to do is to change this. I'm going to call this source SQL. And I use exactly the same name in any further steps after this that has used that name, because this source otherwise will point to that. I want this source to point to this. So I'll replace this with this source SQL. You have to do this for any variable that is repeated. In this case, I had just one variable, so I just changed it here and changed it here. Make sure you see this message saying that there is no syntax error. Now your query is fine, valid to be executed. However, if I click on done, it is still getting data from from Excel. Why? Because whatever you have in in section would be the output of your query. In in section, we have changed type, and that means it is actually getting data from this, regardless of whatever happening in these two steps. We are going to make that uh, change and make it parameterized. So for now, I'll just click on done. And then I go and create a new parameter. In the home tab, you can create a Power Query parameter using this part, clicking on this drop down again to understand how parameters works. Uh, make sure to check out the link to the video uh, in the description below. So create a new parameter. Uh, I'm going to name this parameter data source. I'm going to set the type of that as text and I'm going to have a current value as Excel. Uh, make sure um, whatever uh, whatever spelling you used here, you have to use it in your code as well. It is a case sensitive language power query. I click on OK. This is my parameter created right now. Then I go back to the main query that I had, uh, the one coming from Excel that we injected the code into that. And I go to advanced editor again. What I'm going to do is to add a conditional expression using a simple if statement here. Again, that expression comes at the end of this right before in. I add another comma here and I can write an uh, expression like this. Result is my variable name is equal to if data source. And you can see this IntelliSense helped me to choose it. If it uh, 
equals Excel, then I want this result, the last result right before uh, SQL data source data coming, which normally is this. Else, I want the result from here, the one that is the last step of SQL Server data. Now, this conditional expression is telling me that if the variable, uh, the parameter is Excel, get data from Excel, otherwise get data from SQL Server. Now I need to use this in the in section. Um, so a combination of these three items, the comma, this logical expression, and using that variable in the in statement here. That combination will make my query parametric based on the value of that parameter. Now my query is parametric, I'm going to change that um, a little bit later. For now, I don't need this query anymore. I can remove it because this was used just to get the code from that. I'll delete that query. So I have my main query and I have this parameter. Now, one thing to note is that uh, you see all the steps here, including those steps that was for uh, Excel, steps that is for SQL Server, and the step that is for uh, conditional expression using one of these. If you do any transformations after this step, it is absolutely fine. It works perfectly, such as, for example, if I go and select the sales amount, looking for the sales amount column, yep, sales amount, and remove any other columns. It works perfectly fine, and no matter if I switch to SQL Server or Excel, it works fine because this happened after that uh, important step of switching. If I do this before, then I have to remember to do it for both data sources. Uh, so let me go to the final solution. After doing this, when you click on close and apply, I'll go to the other example, which I have already built. Then uh, when the data loaded into Power BI, you'll have one table, of course. You can go to transform data to edit parameters. This is how you edit parameter values. You don't need to go to Power Query to do that. And here you can change this. For example, I can change it from this to SQL. Uh, and when I click on OK, this will run on it. Now I'll just reduce the number of rows here, the uh, number of columns here, because that SQL data source is quite a big uh, data source in this case. So I'll select only this column and my sales amount column, removing other columns, similar to what I've done in the other solution. I say close and apply. This, of course, for now does it for Excel because my parameter value is Excel. Uh, but now I, I can go and change edit parameters, change it to SQL. Actually here, it doesn't matter what I write. Anything apart from that, Excel would work because that was in the else part of my statement. When I click on OK, it comes up with this message saying that there's a change. Do you want to apply change? I have to either apply change or refresh. Otherwise, this change won't be applied. When I click on that, this now connects to the SQL Server data source. As you see the connection here, it will take some time because my SQL Server data source is quite big. Uh, and and then once done, I should see the result. There are a few important things that you need to know before implementing it. Uh, here you can see the data source now changed to SQL Server. For example, one important thing is that you may want to have um, a visual here showing which data source you are connected to so that your users doesn't get confused. You can do that with a table with combination of that parameter and conditional expression again. Another thing is that this parameter value is a text value. It is likely that someone type Excel um, in a bad way, right? Uh, this wouldn't work correctly. And also it is case sensitive. So even if people type Excel like this, it wouldn't be exactly like the Excel with capital E. I would suggest when you have parameters like this to create a list parameter. I'll explain that in another video. That would give you a selection of options rather than typing in values. Another thing is that this solution would also work in Power BI service without any problem. When you have the report published in the service, uh, when you go to the, to the data set setting of that report, you'll see the parameter section in there, which you can change it. And remember, you have to also refresh it after that change. A uh, few other things is that if you publish it to the service and your data sources are on-premises data sources, for example, for me, Excel was on-premises in my local file, a uh, local folder, and SQL Server is on-premises, I need to define gateway for both of those data sources, gateway data source for both of those. 
Uh, there are a few other things as well. For example, this type of parameter is not a parameter that you expect your end users to use it because they have to have access to the data set settings and they have to refresh the report. This is not that type of parameter. And finally, this can be used for any data sources. My example was for Excel and SQL Server, but it can be done for Snowflake data source, Oracle database, um, SAP data sources, any, any types of data sources would be possible to work. If you have data sources of the same type, your steps to do would be much less than this. I have explained that in another video and you can find the link down in the description as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like any, um, if, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the uh, comments below. I'll be more than happy to look, in, to look into those. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI. Thank you.